Hey, so a lot of drummers, a lot of elders, and people they can understand the communication of the instrument throughout the language of the djembe. So when we use the djembe, you notice the three primary sounds. We have the bass from the center of the drum, the tone, and the slap. Bass, tone, slap. So we use those three primary sounds to produce the language. Other than the language, there's a unity of instrumentation and orchestration. Jim Bates played in a in an orchestra, so you would have maybe two to three, four Jim Bates players, which is only using hands. And then we have another orchestra of drums that accompaniment the Jim Bates. It's called the Doom Doom Orchestra. So we have the Doom Doom, the Sang Mani, and the Kinkini, and those three instruments represent the sound. But they use with sticks and bells. So that's the foundation of the djembe orchestra. So when you put the djembe orchestra together, then we create the rhythm. And then from the rhythm, we have a purpose of the rhythm. Why is this rhythm played? So rhythms are played for specific reasons, which is most important. For example, like they have rhythms and they want to give a child a, 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 a name, or the birth of a child, or they're having a wedding, or they're having a harvest. Many different reasons why djembe is played now throughout the generations. And it's also accompanied with this traditional instrument called the bala. The bala is the great-grandfather of the xylophone. So they also call it as the balaphone, which where the xylophone has come from, but its original name is Bala. So when you incorporate the Bala and the Griots, the Griots are the people who tell the story and the tradition and the history of the Djembe culture or whatever family line this is of the ancient Mali Empire. And bringing it all together it creates a beautiful harmony of music and understanding of the culture. So from the music, we have the song, and we also have the dance. So the dance and the music and the song all comes together, and it has a relationship to whatever rhythm that may be. You know, for example, we have like rhythms, like there's a rhythm called kasa. And kasa represents the gathering of rice. People are on the rice paddies picking rice, and after they collect all the rice, they store the rice into a hut, a huge hut, and they store the rice for the people in the village. And there's a rhythm for that, and the rhythm explains that, you, if you could really understand, you see it and hear it in the music, and then you see it in the dance. The steps and the motions that they do, how they're gathering the rice and they're storing the rice into the huts. So it's all, you know, in divine order which is very unique about the Jimmy culture. And it's an ancient culture. It's been around for a very long time, you know. Yeah, it's a beautiful culture. May I ask you, just, this is a speculative question. Now, you said it started out as a war call drum. Now, what do you think, what do you think, why did it change? Do you think because less war happened, or what? what? Well, in the ancient times, it was more tribal events. So tribal wars and little events would happen tribally in war. So the original drum before the djembe came, the djembe came last. The original drum was just a log with slits in it, played with sticks. And it's called the crin. We call it the log drum. So for example, if you look at an image of certain things in the military, you see people in the front line with the flutes, the snare drum, the horns, and that's the front line letting you know there's, we're having a war call. So then from the crane, the log drum, came the balafone, the bala. Then from the bala came the sangmani drum, drum used with sticks. And then over the generations, it was the djembe. And the djembe was calling it. So sometimes, like fast forward, you could play the djembe and make it sound like a, 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 a excuse me, a, a Uzi machine gun. 
you get the same effect from the djembe. So also djembe is played standing up. Mm -hmm. So when you put on your strap, like I have here, you can move about and walk. You know what I'm saying? So when you walk with the drum, there's a rhythm. You want a demonstration of it? Well, if you want it, just do what you want. You're the master teacher. You're the master drummer. <laughs> because uh, I do have one other question. Before you start, my question is, you see so many drum circles. Everybody's playing the djembe. Yes. W what does that do? What do you think happens spiritually or, whatever, or, or lineagely? What, what, what does that mean? What does that do? I mean, do you think it's sacrilege? I'm not. I, no, 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 let, let me stop right there. What do you think it does? I think um, it does a intriguing, magnetic vibration to the people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people come together in a circle with the djembe, but they don't understand the history, the knowledge, and the science of it. So the djembe is also a spiritual drum. So it has become Africa's most popular drum. There's many drums throughout Africa, but the djembe is the most popular worldwide instrument percussion drum from Africa. So you can find djembe in each continent. Mm -hmm. And you find other nationalities have been coming more attracted to the djembe because without the knowledge, people are just drawn into it. They're intrigued because of the sound and the effect of the instrument alone. So I can't speak for everybody, but in terms of the drum, the drummer has to be very informative to understand and what to share with the community that it can have its principal reasons why the drum is on display. So other than that, you know, most people just come together and they look at the drum from an outside perspective instead of dealing with it or living with it from an inside perspective as the culture. Yeah. So now I'm going to give you a little demonstration of how we hoist up the drum. Mm -hmm. This is how the djembe is played standing up. So we walk like this. We can put the drum in front of us when we actually drum it. Then we put the djembe to the side, to the left side, or purposely to the right side, and we make a walk. I can I can talk to you. you're so fast I can talk to you for forever what's your name again my name is Gene Osborne mm. well may I call you what, what should I call you <laughs> brother Osborne Gene people call me Gino Gino yeah that's your street name Gino okay uh, that's <laughs> one of my cultured names you know everybody know that's Gene the old represents Osborne without mm. saying the full last name mm -hmm. so I just put it together Gino Excellent. Yes. Okay. One last. No, I, I, I always lie like that. Now you know you're all. You're all. How we say? Um, you know, you're all hooked up. You know, you color coordinated. Even your shoes. Thank you. Now it's uh, oh, oh, it's the truth. It's why did you do that? Let me see. Is it? Is that? Do you do that on purpose or is that you know part of what whatever have you? You know. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. Come on. Is that style? Um, you supposed to? It's, it's, it's not actually a fashion statement, but it's a statement to to let the people that gather around to, to, to see what the culture should be represented as. You know, this time I drum in regular street clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, I might wear, drum in a warm-up suit, mm -hmm. you know, keep it a little casual, but when I'm out to, you know, express myself amongst the people of our color, you know, I like to give them the color and the vibration, you know, so it's not that I'm just coordinating. You know, I have many, many different outfits. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful for having, because I go to Africa and get them made for myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I bring them back. And I like to wear them for certain occasions, you know. It wasn't that um, I think of it for every occasion, but specific occasions I really like to come out and represent well and to let our people know there's a certain presentation that we need to have on mm -hmm. record. Mm -hmm you know, for the right time, so that the people that aren't of our color or our origin 
they can rec recognize and respect the culture and see the authenticity, you know, the, 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 the garbs itself, you know, it's very traditional. Mm -hmm. and I'm very comfortable wearing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I swear it's the last one. I'm not gonna lie this time. Have you ever had a situation, this is a stock question, have you ever had a situation where things were so coordinated that I don't know you you felt you felt the great spirit you felt you you felt the creator or or the audience or you was so lifted that you said whoa I know why I do this. Um, throughout my experience, it's been several decades I've been drumming. So yes, I have experience um, being at certain sets and events where there's another level of spirituality and. Before I even touch the stage or even a dressing room, I could feel the presence. Or without even seeing the audience, there's an expectation. And then it's like a little voice that comes through my body. And it helps me to recognize that this is more than just physical. You know, there's a spiritual awakening and there's a spiritual essence that needs to be shared. So. In all actuality, I do understand that at times I'm only a vessel to do God's work, the Almighty Creator, you know, to do His work because from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, the drum is the voice of God, you know? So the voice is like, like how we say, the unseen. We believe in the unseen, but we can hear it, we can feel it, we respect it and honor it. So that's the same thing for the drums, you know. So when the drums are being played and it's sent out in messages, it's sent out in rhythm, those are the voices of God. So when you hear the Almighty Creator speak, you know, you feel a certain essence that you can appreciate those who do. And like you start to pat your feet, shake your head, snap your fingers, and you, you feel the music. You become one with the music. So there has been plenty of experiences throughout my experience that I have had that challenge where I know this is not just an ordinary event, you know, this is a special event where I need to really say the right things. Mm -hmm. So like, like I said from the beginning, the drum is a messenger, you know, so I like to be the messenger for God and utilize that through my instrument. Thank you so very much. You're welcome.